Imagine for a moment the entire world, not just empty, abandoned, or devoid of people, but in miniature form. In this episode, we'll be talking with Lori Nix and Kathleen Gerber about their journey in the world of miniature building and photography. But first, this is your Geek Fix. Where did this all start for each of you? What drove you into art or what drove you into wanting to do things with miniatures or photography? Wow. Do you want me to start? Uh, no, start. I'll start for a change. How's that? All right. <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Well, we, I, I grew up in a small town in, in Illinois, out on the farm. So most of the time, there was no one there. And I needed <laughs> to entertain myself. So I don't know. I started drawing and just like copying record albums and pictures out of magazines. And so that was how I spent time making cartoons. So for years and years, that was like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause you know, that was back in the day of there's only three television stations and th- they don't always come in well. Yeah. UHF. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's- yeah. <laughs> I was the remote control. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, so it was just, something to to do and then it got to be as I got older it's like uh my hands like if I wasn't making something they would kind of like not itch but they would want that action so you know baking and just started doing everything and um uh I was almost an English major (laughs) thinking I like to read Mm -hmm. um maybe someone will pay me to read right I don't know (laughs) And then I managed to switch over to art right at the last minute and uh, just initially commercial art. And then it's like, I don't want to run around and get stuff copied because that was when you had to do all that. And then ended up in studio arts and just did all of the uh, basics. Uh, miniatures was not really part of my life at all. Uh, just Still two of, dimensional. Yeah, a lot of drawing, some some yeah. some sculpture. I ended up mm-hmm. doing glass blowing once I got oh, into wow. like Warrior. Yeah. Oh, well, that was, it was so cool. It was, yeah. you know, how could you not? <laughs> yeah. And um, so got into mold making, a little bit more finishing. Um, and then after graduate school, got a job doing um, essentially faux finishes and sort of oh, specialty wow. finishes. So, you know, all that is sort of led up to a lot of what I do now and then didn't get into miniatures until sort of met Lori and uh-huh. that's what that's what you were doing and I was bored and <laughs> so. that, that's what you were doing at that time what, what led you into getting up to that point well I also grew up in a small town in Kansas uh similar to Kathleen and you know as kids we we're always playing outside and I you know playing in the mud making mud balls, making forts, even playing with like discarded chicken feet and you'd find in the neighbor's <laughs> trash can. I know. It's just, you know, and so I was always like into building and assembling things. And um, so when I was in college, I studied ceramics and woodworking and photography. So more hands-on, I can't draw to save my life. She has to do all the drawing. And, um, uh and for, you know, all of a semester, I was an accounting major in college. Yeah. Okay. That was my dad wanting me to, you know, have, a, have you know, be able to make a paycheck. Yeah. It's like, right, yeah, right. accounting. It's like, no, accounting isn't for me. And I switched my major. I switched my major to ceramics and photography. And um, after grad school, ended up working in the photo world. In the, I, was a, I was a color printer and a color lab, both in oh, okay. Ohio and New York. And... Um, and the, just the artwork that we do together, it's all, it's less photography. It's all constructing the image, building these things to then to be photographed. Right. For us, like for me, photography is like, oh God, maybe one eighth of what we do. And right. now it's been diminished even more. Yeah. So, yeah. But at the same time, I, I think when I think of you two, I think of like big picture and details. Is that, I mean, is that accurate at all? Big oh picture, yeah. Big, big, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh yeah, it's opposite <laughs> for you so on the screen, over. isn't it? Sorry. If I point here, it's like over there. <laughs> and, and it's still that way. Like I still kind of keep the big picture in mind, and she just focuses in on the things that have to get done. 
mm -hmm. uh, on a daily basis or for the next scene, both commercially and for fine artwork. So I'm a big picture person. She's right. all work. <laughs> right. Not kidding. <laughs> well, you're, you, you tend to do the overall structure, mm -hmm. kind of figure out a game plan, and then we'll break it down into the smaller pieces. Objectives, and then right. she'll start, say it's a, a, a building, she'll start doing that, and I'll start to think about, well, what are the details of some of that going to be? Yeah. And right. I'll kind of start on that, and then... I don't know, a lot of a lot of separate parallel work and then it kind of comes together at the end. So, so Lori, can you see a difference between when you were doing this on your own and then when the two of you were working to kind of kind of cover those two sides as far as efficiency or as far as process? Oh yeah, I think when Kathleen came on board, she was a little um, timid at first, but over time just became inserting her ideas more and more and more. And I I think it's really good to work collaboratively to have someone to bounce your ideas off of. Mm -hmm. So she'll push me to revisit ideas or to change things around. And I push her to like do it again and again until it gets right. Um, but yeah, without her, two things made the artwork get better. Working with Kathleen, working alongside her, and then also just being in New York City, surrounded mm -hmm. by other great artists. So then you didn't have to like up your game you, just yeah. because you're getting influences all the time. It, yeah. materials wise it's got to be a lot easier out there i i mean i'm just guessing there but it, <laughs> coming from where i am trying to access things to build things or do things you know yeah. it's mail time um, yeah you know now we're in ohio so we're no longer oh, are you really dark. yeah oh we, i did we, not know that we relocated That's, back got to scoop <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> back to ohio so we're we're in cincinnati ohio now Oh, well, wow. when we okay. when we initially went to New York, which was 1999, I mean, the internet, I think it's called, wasn't well, yeah. such a thing, or, you know, it wasn't as big a thing, right? So right. it made more of a difference then to have the foam wrapper store, the right. plastic, what, store, plastic, plastic store, the yeah. light bulb store, the yeah. whatever store, um, and be able to go there, and then even just while we were still there, we'd do more and more ordering because we want, you know, can't keep everything. Mm. Um, so the world has grown to suit our needs a little, yeah. which yeah. is nice. So now, yeah. yeah. So now instead of spending hours riding the subway all over the city, uh, we just now wait for it to arrive in the mail. Because <laughs> <laughs> that well, I guess that's how I'm doing it too then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How, I mean, at the same time, that subway's brought some inspiration in the past. You've you've literally oh. built a not just once, but technically twice. You you yes. did the subway because you also made a miniature of the miniature, right? <laughs> Definitely, uh, yeah. which is one one of my favorite uh, photos that you did of the one of your apartment where you replicated <laughs> not just just made something that looked like your apartment. I mean, literally down to every CD, every yep. record, every every tool was was recreated as well as the project that you had in that space was mm -hmm. recreated um mm -hmm. i mean what it, did you still have the other project did you have both products set projects set up at the same time or did you do that based on the photo that you already had no i think uh wait let me, th let me think um no it was that it was, was how there. the apartment was and that was yeah. in that image our apartment was actually a little cleaner than it normally is <laughs> because <laughs> There's a whole wall that was had shelving that is, which is where the camera was sitting. So we couldn't even, we couldn't even really fully give the viewer how most people find it claustrophobic, but how busy and active that yeah. space was all the time. So, um, yeah, that was actually in place as we were, as we were making the scene. Well, another one of my favorite photos isn't actually a photo of that, that you made of the objects by themselves. It's actually your behind the scenes photo that you did of the freeway system oh, yeah. that you had set up inside your apartment so you can see the the scale you're in the background you have a piece that's in the foreground um and it's obviously it's it is it's a big part of the space how much your uh your interest plays a part in your life or or, or your space um how, what do you, i mean what's your what's your stance on on space and 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 use of space for for art and for well, for like things like what we do too well i'm definitely 
inspired by my surroundings, which is how the whole city series happened, just living in Brooklyn, New York. So I'm taking inspiration from everything that I'm seeing around me. And as far as fitting in the space, that that um, overpass scene with the highway, it just didn't translate photographically. It was way more impressive if you could have seen it in person. And somehow after we photographed it, it just kind of like made it feel less overwhelming than it truly was. Yeah. Do you know what skill that was? Mm, I would probably oh. say matchbox scale if I had okay. to. And I'm not even sure what matchbox scale is, but I'm just thinking about the width of the highways. Mm. Of course, we only had to build, you know, the highway from one angle. So we right, never right. the backside. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like when we were doing that whole series, the whole apartment at that point was just full of art stuff. I mean, we were blessed with a really big apartment mm -hmm. at that time. And so the living room, you know, there was one chair that faced the TV and then everything else was for art. Uh -huh. so there was like two two work tables there, the computer room that could have a scene set up. Then there was another room which, for building and then the spray booth or spray area was there. And so everything was kind of getting the storage was along the hallway in the bedroom. So it yeah. was, we didn't work where we lived. We lived where we worked. You know, gotcha. that was the emphasis really. Right. So right. Yeah. yeah. We even had a chop saw underneath the kitchen table. So. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, yeah. what about time? As far as like time management, uh, I mean, do, when you're hungry, do you, tend to eat or do you tend to stay more in the project oh back then we just ate and worked simultaneously if you looked yeah. at kathleen's table there'd just be a little area that she would just like <laughs> put her hands and like scoot out big enough to put a plate down yeah yeah and then be surrounded by paint it's, it's part of the process there's two hands going at one time is it <laughs> kind of, yeah i mean um since moving i don't do that so much now <laughs> trying to find a little more balance so just so we can sustain it because that was right. that was 20 years of that which was right. a lot kind of soul yeah. crushing after a while it was yeah. um so you know taking a little breath so now we just got we have a separate studio space um so that's pretty full and it is actually an apartment. We can't seem to get away from that. So there's still a kitchen. Right. <laughs> and we still happen to eat right around where we're working. Yeah. It's just not. The it's not apartment. breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Right. right. It's just lunch. Lunch. Afternoon dinner. <laughs> right. How, how long does it take you to do a build, typically? Typically, it was always seven months was our average oh, really? for creating yeah. scenes. Yeah. One lasted uh, map room took us 15 months to do. Wow. And the fastest one we did, I think, was vacuum showroom, which only took us about a month to do. Yeah. Wow. But back then, we were working day jobs. So we were right. doing those at night and on the weekends. Yeah. How many, so, so literally, like, coming home at what time and then working till what time? About 6.30, 7 o'clock at night, working till 11. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, and we don't back do that to work as much the next day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Life on the outside is not necessary at that point, right? <laughs> and now that we're in this pandemic mode, you know, we're staying away from life on the outside. Sure. Like yeah, happy. now it's all justified, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. That's good. I don't know. Where, yeah. where have the projects kind of, because they have evolved over time. I've, I've gone back to some of your earliest stuff. I mean, what what would you how would you describe your earlier builds and photography compared to what you're literally doing like this week or or now the early stuff was i would say simplistic naive and full of humor and um as we've progressed over time the skills have gotten better um i'm all about packing as much texture and things for the eye to see into each scene um, the humor isn't quite as evident now, you know, especially since we're talking like the city series was post-apocalyptic. Some of it's still kind of funny. Right. And we, right. And we always hid fun, fun yeah. little visuals in each of the scenes. Yeah. But that last series, Empire, there wasn't as much as much humor. And we started that in 2014, I believe. Before, yeah. Before oh, really? Trump. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
I was, already, I was already getting a sense that um, America was no longer the, you know, empire that it used to be, which is why right. it's called empire. It's like, it's, it's like the, uh, we're watching, we're watching America change over time, Ch upri uh, rising of China, we're diminishing. So, um, yeah, so it was less, less humor there. Literal evolution. Yes. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Because when we were, uh, when when we were uh, thinking about that, just the whole uh, name of it, and then one of the scenes in particular, uh, with the arch, yeah, uh, arch, that arch. one, you know, yeah. there's there's triumphal arches all around the world that these countries or empires built when they were at the height, right. and then you know everything is cyclical and you just can't sustain it, so, you know. Italy used to be great. Rome yeah. used to be really powerful. Right. France, yeah. Right, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. And now Grand Army Plaza out yeah. in Brooklyn. Yeah. You know? that, so, that's the one where you had the water right in front of it. Is that yeah. that one? Yeah. 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 And, and you had all these details you had to keep from floating away. Uh, yeah. There's lots, there lots of wax and hot glue in that water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it took us a couple of weeks to photograph it. So some mold kind of started happening in some of the oh, bushes yeah. and greenery. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Just That's happened. just added detail. That's that sounds, right. right. <laughs> That's a little smell of vision to go with the scene. Yeah, yeah. Four D. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a new space now. Are you gonna do another miniature? Oh, uh, we're kind of. I like, hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We're still doing miniatures. Um. But we're not going to do any more apocalypse-type imagery. Mm -hmm. That's that's done. Only because we're in the middle of it now. We're living the oh, apocalypse, yeah. you know. Um, and at this point, there's, like, too many options of what I want to do. And then there's images that she wants to do. And we can't quite figure out what's the next logical step. Mm -hmm. And we pay our bills by doing commercial work. Sure. And unfortunately, the commercial work takes up more of our time now than our day jobs ever did. So, well, you've done some actual ads recently, too, I, mm -hmm, I noticed, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Uh, it is can... cool. And then it's also that it's with a lot of these quick turnarounds, mm -hmm. that's when we often discover new materials, new process, because it's like, well, we can't use this. It's going to take yeah. too long. Mm -hmm. What can we get that similar? It's like, oh, well, this is awesome. We'll do there this. There was a now. style change, I know, just a little bit in, in uh, the... Uh, I don't want to say it's it's a for Volkswagen. Who did you just barely do that? For? Uh, we did a Mini <laughs> Cooper. Small space. Oh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Mini Cooper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there you go. So, yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's kind of nice just being hands for hire now and then. Yeah. And uh, let our brains rest a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Do they give you some freedom as far as as what you do when you do some of these different commercial based? It depends, it depends on the client. Yeah. 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 And if it's for, if it's for us selling a product, not so much freedom. If it's say Kathleen worked on a, a, a on a person's, um, film, I'm thinking Veril. Oh yeah. We, we've, we've worked on some like smaller projects where we do almost a little bit of set design with the, oh, wow. with the people also. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's sort of nice and, and that is a freedom. little bit different, yeah. uh, just to have our input as to how we think that the models could best be utilized, mm -hmm. uh, if there's maybe something they didn't quite think about. Um, so that, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That sounds awesome. So, <laughs> so tell me, so I mean, early on, some of the things that I've seen is you've had some different series. Uh, one of them was kind of like a if you were to take a museum and and combine it with, uh, what's the best way to put it? it? It was almost like playing off of language a little bit. Uh, you had like the uh, beaver that's on the oh, outside yeah. of the, uh, <laughs> which, which I was showing my daughter that one because we, we had to make a uh, diorama where we oh, yeah. for school and it had to have animals and things in it. And I said, oh, I know some. Let's go in here and look <laughs> at these because we can make it look like a little museum and stuff. And yeah, at any rate. So you did some of that, and that was black and white photography. Yeah. Yep. Um, we just were talking about the post-apocalyptic stuff, which is a little larger scale, 
uh, color photography. It maybe it, with it seemed like a little bit higher hue and things in it. Oh yeah. Um, and then I mean, tell us a little bit about some. What are some other projects that you've done or that you're doing? Uh, let's see. Well, that 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 black and white series sort of came about because the uh, the uh, the color work takes so long. Mm. It's just like it's like can we have a little bit of reward a little right. more often? <laughs> so we set some parameters. I think we decided it can't take more than like three weeks. Well, that didn't happen. Uh -huh. um, but uh, yeah, just tried to have it be more more direct a little bit more jokey some of it is uh -huh. fine with us um just mm. to kind of stretch muscles and actually use the camera a oh little bit. Right. it to laugh a little bit more yeah yeah because yeah. 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 like, some of those jokes are just too are too funny that that beaver image that you saw if you look at the if you look at the crates it says made in mexico you know <laughs> even though they're north american beavers they were right. fabricated in mexico <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, there was details in the details fun. in, in oh, those yeah. pictures. That's what made them fun. Is yeah, yeah. You looked for you had to look for all the little things that, that at first glance you didn't notice any. I mean, it just looked like a picture. Some of them looked like Lord, a yeah. picture of a museum. Yeah, it's like yeah. oh well, yeah. It's, it's but as you looked at it, that's where the humor came in, and it kind kind of keeps on growing, and you can keep staring at it. Uh, I like that kind of thing. So, and I think uh. that's true with your post-apocalyptic stuff too. There's all these details that you really have to dig into to, to, to fully enjoy it. And that's, that makes it great. Yeah. And I, you know, I have ideas for possible new images, but then when I talk to Kathleen about them, we realize how long they're going to take. We're like, Oh, I don't know if we really have that. <laughs> Cause that series was, was 10 years. Right. And I don't know if we have another 10 years to dedicate to the next series right now. We're looking at smaller, quicker projects, but mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and as far as art goes, it's everything's on hold art wise, like the galleries, they're, yeah. they're open, but they're not really having these amazing shows. And I like, right. I like seeing my, our work on the wall in a gallery setting, even though more people will see it online right. or a book than they ever will see it in the actual um, mm -hmm. physical space. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've been kind of, I've been taking, I haven't done any significant work in, for the last two years. So, yeah, we've been kind of slowly working on a new series. Like she said, it's smaller. Um, I think we're still trying to figure out what what it is exactly. Um, but it's it's kind of more sculptural mm -hmm. in a oh, way. Okay. And, we, and, and she's got some other ideas, which are sculpture, sculpture, installation sort of stuff. So trying to figure out what we can do along those lines yeah and the reason why we're going more sculptural is i just it's interesting watching people interact with the models mm -hmm. you know when, they, when it's a big photo on the wall they stand back they only spend like a couple of seconds three seconds and move right. on but if it's sculptural sometimes they'll even and you give them lots to look at you know they'll interact they'll bend down they'll peer inside just yeah. kind of um entertaining people on a different level and yeah I really, I really want to do it. We just have to set a, set aside some time to hammer it out. But it's right now, set perspective at that point. Yeah, uh, I, I, I noticed that uh, the library uh, scene. You took that from more than one angle, and so you had, you had, or at least there's a photo that you did that's at the bottom of the base of the tree, looking up through the top. Of ah, the library, that was a pinhole well camera. Yeah. Part. Is it? Yeah, and and it looks. I mean, the, every every angle looked like a fresh piece of art that was really good. <laughs> uh, and I know some of these might be just the background, uh, you know, photos, but at the same time, yeah, they're just as equally as interesting, and I, I like that. Yeah, our studio motto has always been work harder, not smarter. And if we were yeah. smart, we would try to get three or four images out of every diorama we did, but we're not that smart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that... that particular shot um you had gotten a pinhole camera so we had decided to just um we just would put that inside of the scene when we were done and we would do like one one roll of film and and whatever happened happened and there were some good ones now and then there's some clunkers oh, of course. but uh i think violin shop had some good ones also yeah and just you know pinhole is kind of fun because you just never know what you're going to get because you have no idea what the camera's seeing 
Right. So, yeah. And they're in a box in my apartment. In, in a closet somewhere. Are they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, I, uh, I mean, from beginning to, I guess that's one of the pieces, too, is before... Uh, and maybe not so much now, but before you had to think again, big picture, like what what this is going to look like through a lens, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And so you're building it based on that picture, that angle. I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, so, so when you go into it, like uh, what what even sparks it? What makes you think? You know, I think what we had to do is build a miniature of the uh, Chinese place down the street or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Those those ideas came so quickly. I wanted to do a Chinese takeout, as and I only saw it within five seconds. I'm I'm driving the car down an avenue in Brooklyn and off to off to the right is a corner fast food Chinese takeout, and it just mm -hmm. struck me. It's like we need to do that. And then I have to convince Kathleen and say, Hey, Kathleen, I want to do a Chinese takeout in our neighborhood, and she. I said no. I didn't. She often has to sell me on it. Often, and it's often because I, I try to think of how much little work I'm going to have to do. Right, right. <laughs> and if it seems like an uh, inordinate amount, then I'm like, eh, Well, that one was a tricky one, though, because the tricky part about that was you could say, well, it's just this basic set. But the details came in, which you didn't have to do. Oh. Uh, the details came in on the on the menu, even. Oh, yeah. Those... Rather than just using what you could, you could have just taken a picture. That's what I would have done. To be honest, I would have gone the easy route. I would have just taken a picture of a menu, integrated, printed it smaller. But no, you, yeah, tell us a little bit about what you did from there. Well, <laughs> we could have gone to the Chinese takeout around the corner and ordered food and plated it. But Kathleen's right. gluten free, so she can't even eat that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just waste it. Yeah. Right. Gotcha. So that's not going to happen. And so it's like, well, we still need these. And, and I looked across Google to look to find those images, and they just weren't quite good enough for what we wanted. So Kathleen. I actually really like making miniature food quite a uh -huh. bit. So uh, it was, it was kind of fun. So in the end, she thought it was not a very good idea. But it was fun. Yeah, I, st I think I still have all those little plates of food. I thought you finally threw them away. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. I so <laughs> that is that is I mean this is gonna be the most quant controversial question I'm gonna ask you. It's gonna make some people cry. That's all right. So you get all done with the build. Yep. You get all done with the photography. You you got the pictures. And now you what do you do with it? <laughs> <laughs> we save certain items like here on our desk. This is like a leftover from one of our Oh yeah, the monument. desert one. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. we save this, mm -hmm. and then specialty things that we make like that we do save because mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of sentimental value there, and a lot of them are just really beautiful objects. Mm -hmm. But like that landscape for that one was like eight feet long mm -hmm. right. and about six feet deep, and it was in in pieces. So it's like they're not tight little tabletop things that you could easily box up. They are right. assembled and just sort of momentarily put together for that photo. Mm -hmm. So it's just not possible. Sorry. It's right. Um, so we, we toss the scenes after yeah. we're done. We recycle but, as much as we can. Would you say though, there's a certain level of closure though in doing that too? I mean, as far as the wrap up or yeah. Oh yeah, because like if we're like working on a scene for seven months, we've we've had dinner with that scene, we've mm -hmm. um, watched television with that scene. Right. So when we finally get to throw it away, it means one of two things. Um, it means that uh, we're done, mm -hmm. and we're getting ready to start the next one. So yeah. that's what's exciting. It sounds like, like a relationship you just described. <laughs> it is a relationship, though. It yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're not attached to all the things on your on your desk. Right. And right. You see it every day and like to look at it and hold yeah. it and. I mean, who know. doesn't love a clean start or a fresh start? Oh, yeah. 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 So. Yeah. And I gotta admit. Met with, as far as like the scale of that scene that, that you just just pulled that from, I don't know if you might shown it again, but I thought that they must have been much. I was picturing something about this big, 
No. So, no. People... so, I mean, to put it in perspective, yeah. <laughs> was yeah. the background at least a di- I mean, obviously, that had to be slightly different scale in the background. Uh, yeah. The background oh, yeah. was definitely eight feet. And it had to be photographed in two sections, the foreground, which would be this, and then the background, only because the depth of field, the camera couldn't get that much depth all the way back, um, right. forward and backward. Yeah, I mean, so we work in miniature relatively, but there's things aren't that miniature. I, right. The subway that we made um, was 25 inches wide, 8 feet deep. There's a picture of Kathleen inside of it, laying inside <laughs> right. of it. Yeah. Holes. So it's like it is in miniature in relation to the real Goodbye. subway, yeah. but they're not these cute little tiny things. Right. The living room scene that we did of our studio that was tiny. You know, those right. were like small objects. Right. Well, the salon that was because I saw your hand coming in for that one. So yeah. I did some some yeah. uh, scale on that one. But I mean, like, so the we got the subway scene was about quarter scale. Yeah. Uh, whereas the salon is about one twelfth scale, and so yep. um, that so that one is there. one that we have held on to. So because yeah. it's the smallest that we have, yeah. Oh, right. Really? Yeah, oh, I think great. we we showed it in a sh- in a at a museum that was doing something about miniatures, and uh, so it has its own special crate. You know, wow. it leaves us every now and then, but otherwise, yeah, people people get very upset. And you should save it. You should save it. I'm like, well, do you have a barn you'll give us for free? Because right. we got, we would have like 70 of these things. Right. About eight by 10 by six. You got a space yeah. for free? Right. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. Do you yeah. want to buy it from us? No. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Honestly, All right. Never mind. Then. <laughs> and museums, they don't really want things like this that, that, right are perishable or will deteriorate over time. Cause that just mm-hmm. means they have to spend all that much money to preserve it. And we don't right. build it for it to last forever. We want right. the images to last forever, but not necessarily the actual models. So, yeah. Well, yeah. some of these you're having to care for them as after you, once when you're starting to build them all the way up to the end, you're having to make sure that they stay at a certain level and the cats aren't uh, wandering right. through them and, <laughs> and right. eating them. Yeah. Right. We, yeah. We them. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's pretty good, though. You, so yeah. you, did have, you had one set that, that attracted the cats. I know at least uh, that was that was uh, Botanic uh, Garden great, in Great Hall. Yeah. yeah, in Great Hall, we used the tops of carrot greens for some of the greenery and the oh. calico cat. Oh man, she was up there eating, 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 and then <laughs> blah, vomiting right into the scene. <laughs> that just adds to the aesthetic, doesn't it? It totally does. I can yeah. point it out. Like there yeah. it is. There's, there's a pile of green vomit right there. Well, and you had the underwater one, which I still don't know enough about. Uh, the, you yeah. had the ship at the bottom, and you had some octopus pieces. Oh, that's a that, bounty. Uh, oh, bounty, yeah. Oh, totally. The calico cat was in the middle of that, licking that, like, licking, licking, licking. Because <laughs> it was octopus fresh tentacles, arms. Yeah, and yeah. it took us, like, I could probably like, a week and a half to shoot it. So we'd put the tentacle arms in, photograph it, take them out. I mean, how how did you do that one? Did you is that actually submerged or anything, or did you do that with just with lighting and? There's a piece and, of plex uh, that comes out like a shelf, uh-huh. and then another piece of plex that's holding it all up, and so oh, everything okay. is kind of behind that to give you the up a, a below water, above okay. water. And that would change you your lighting too from above and below to a little bit. Yeah, right? oh, yeah, that's great, great idea. <laughs> wow, I like that. <laughs> are there are there tools? Are there any materials or tools that you just feel like? This is like when you discover them. This is this is the thing. This is gonna make things so much easier and efficient. Or this is gonna. This is the thing that we could just go to. Well, um, I love my rulers. So I have a ruler and a digital caliper that I use uh-huh. nonstop. Yeah. Well, because you're she's the type builder, and so yeah, you do all that. I do hard edges. She does soft things. Show them one of the things you're working on right now. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like, can we? Oh, sure. Can we? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it doesn't have a logo. This, okay. is for, this is for a commercial project. So oh, okay. I say soft. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to whisper it to you so it's like okay. a little video. Oh, <laughs> that is so eggs. cool. <laughs> I know, it's not that exciting. But oh. No, that is pretty awesome, though. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> So, so when you say soft, literally, like, is that 
still no that's, like if i put my finger on it it would no, squish no, it's, it's all hard it's, it's hard epoxy. yeah epoxy wow. and yeah, you did the plate like a, too uh no we we repurposed something that's that, the way that to we be. found i yeah. like that okay. the one that you're working on right over there and then to uh, go and to go with the eggs uh ready yeah yeah mm -hmm. Pancakes. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that looks awesome. You get the uh, butter on there and everything. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. So, so something like that, you can, you can photograph, you can use, you can put whatever, and it's, it's going to last a bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, initially, when we were doing commercial work, we would make it in the studio, take it to their studio. They'd right. film it, they'd photograph it, and then we would bring it home. And now, quite often, we just uh, leave it there. Either either the client like buys it, or it's like mm -hmm. part of the contract that they will keep everything for mm -hmm. why I don't know. Um, uh, so yeah, so we don't really have as much stuff like that. But but yeah, this is, so so since it doesn't just live with us, we do make it out of materials that will hold up longer. So what'd you make that out of? Like what would you use to? Uh, well, Lord that? made some delicious pancakes. I will say they're still here. Very small, yeah. They're still here. <laughs> oh, really? For the reference? <laughs> yeah. And uh, we hot glued them together, made a <laughs> mold, and cast them in a, a, a two-part pourable plastic. Is that a resin? Yep. Oh, a resin wow. With a with a little foam insert to take up space, and uh, yeah. So it'll get glued onto other plates and then be, you know. So that is so that is a not. that is a direct replica of of a real thing. Then. Yeah. yeah. What about the but the butter though? Did you have to put something on top to make that shape before you mold? I have it? these little tiny. Um, it's measuring for like a pinch, a dash, sure, and a sure. whatever, <laughs> a smidge, a smidge. Yeah. And, a so, and so this real is real cooking. Like, yeah. This yeah. Is like, a smidge of like sculpy or bakeable polymer okay. clay put on top and then yeah yeah wow yeah. but it yeah. looks nice and shiny too did you hit that a little bit afterwards with uh some type then of i get to paint it or something? then i oh, get to yeah. paint it so this is like uh well like, first there's a, a colored primer colored uh -huh. primer and then Lori mixed me like three or four other colors it's still not done uh mm -hmm. i will labor over this much too long and uh, <laughs> and we'll just get it done. Yeah, it works out in the end. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And we have that to deliver it, and we deliver it on uh, Monday. Monday. Yeah. So oh, these are like wow. the color things I get. Like I make myself colors and then mix oh. paints to match our colors. So that's our pancake colors. Yeah, that's very really good. Yeah. Lori's years as a color printer are very handy. Yeah. In the studio. Yeah. Yeah, wow. So. What. Um, <laughs> What, what would you say your favorite tool is? I, I lost it. I oh, no. Find it. It's a little ceramic tool with, with a little wood handle and then a little loop at the end. And uh -huh. I don't know. I'll, like, find it in the refrigerator. It sounds like the sculpting, like a sculpting tool? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. It, just, okay. it feels good. And yeah. It, yeah. I can't find it. Oh. That's... Yeah, it's sad. Uh, Tools are always changing for me as far as what I like in the moment. Is it Tamiya, uh, the putty? Oh, have you ever oh, used yeah, that? I have some of that? Yeah, oh. I, yeah, I yeah, have. Uh, it away. I always use the natural one, the one that's kind of silvery. This one's the white, mm. but mm. I I love that stuff. And it's <laughs> it's pretty, pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, you gotta <laughs> prepare and yeah. sanding it. The, that smell, uh, yeah, kind of wafts throughout our entire house, but it's all good. Yeah, well, yeah. I, just, I just discovered the like, was it green, green, green stuff? Green stuff that, oh, I didn't yeah. know. They don't teach that in our art, art school. No, no. 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 Well, there's stuff that's coming out all the time too. It's just it's, it fills in little projects or, or or does the thing a little bit better than than before. Yeah, one of the questions I only had one question that came through in the time that I had asked uh, that somebody wanted to know, which was, do you have things like? Uh, uh, 3D printers and and things like that that you ever use, or do you always do just what you can make with your hands? I feel a little bit like a cheater, but we actually have a laser cutter. So oh, that, that is great. 
So, that so do you have a fire story too? Oh, <laughs> no. But this is like what we do with our laser cutter. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. And we made this on the laser cutter. So. Oh, did you really? I was going to ask yeah. you how do you did that one. Yeah. So what was what was the uh, what what was the materials that you cut? I, I could tell one of them was one of those for the building. Was that uh, That's the just thin ch wood or? It's just chipboard. Chipboard, yeah. Yeah. Really is that true for both of them? Board. No, the other one is acrylic, so plexiglass oh, okay. sheets of various thicknesses. So. Just do it in in layers and then build it up around it. Glue it oh. all together. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. And then how about the, the, you had the texture that's on that, uh, too. The, yeah, we just rastered that in. Did you? Oh, yeah, okay. find a texture. It looks on, so good. Online. It looks like you could look through those. You can look through those. You can. Yeah, <laughs> you can. It doesn't matter whether you could or not, but we wow. can. I just wish, you know, I could totally see you through them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that <laughs> is so cool. We do try to make things as realistic as possible. I mean, that's yeah. our goal is to make things realistic and whether yeah. they function or not. But yeah. Did, did you keep any of the salon chairs? Oh, I guess you kept the whole salon, right? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. That's great. Wow. Do we keep the laundry? Do we keep anything from laundromat? And then the, and for laundromat, we have the washers uh -huh. and the chairs at the end of the room hmm. and a fan. <laughs> do, and now I, I know a, a trick that actually, I honestly learned from you. Uh, I think Lori was making a comment about the fact that you'll mix in some real, like like purchasable, mm -hmm. uh, pre-made uh, miniatures with some other things just to add that depth or detail a little bit more. So kind of mixing it in um, was a recommendation that you had, and I tried doing that with one of mine, and I thought it was awesome. But at the same time, miniatures cost sometimes more than the real things. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right? Like yeah, two yeah. or three times more? It's, so, it's ridiculous, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you've been inventive in, in the ways that you figured out how to make different things, like the CDs that you mentioned, the uh, a paint bucket. Um, you did a miniature of your camera, too. How'd you do that? How or at least the that? lights. You did the can lights. Yeah. Uh, wood. I out, think right? it was a PVC light. It was either a wood dowel or it was like a PVC pipe. I think it was a PVC pipe. Okay. And you filled yeah. in the end? Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah, but it yeah. Looked... So there's like lots of like cylinders and then Lori will essentially make a little cap uh -huh. and then we'll kind of shape it. Um, but yeah, I mean, quite often we'll just spend a lot of time shaping. It's like we did a job years ago for Airwick <laughs> and had to make tiny little plugins. It's oh, like, wow. like plexiglass. Just like the real ones? The yeah. Like the, yeah. So, and that was before the laser cutter, before anything. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a, a sander and a plexiglass rod. And it's like, okay, I'm here for yeah. a couple hours. And then you just polish it out. And, you know. She had, for a job we did for Tic Tac, she had to put a helmet on top of a Tic Tac. So, again, that was also before the laser. She just grind out a, oh, what, wow. a bead. No, no, that was also PVC rod and um, some of the epoxy putty putty on top and then just Grinding. shaped it like a helmet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> they, of course, they wanted it at that scale. They, they couldn't go make, have you make a bigger Tic Tac and then put a helmet on it. Oh, no. no. So, <laughs> A bigger tic tac no 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 gotta use gotta use the product yeah, use the real thing yeah. yeah yeah and as far as other high-end materials i have a 3d printer that i've never been able to get to work so it sits in the bat it sits on a wooden board across the bathtub in the in the in the bathroom oh. and and you know 3d modeling i don't have those computer skills so we rely on this uh a vendor who's also here in cincinnati who's fantastic uh -huh. yeah so I'll pull it off yeah, so we're we're embracing 3D printing more and more, just not, yeah. yeah, only when we absolutely have to. I mean, I have all these high-end 3D modeling programs, but I actually used Tinkercad recently, which is like the actually, lowest level of CAD, but it, at the same time, I made this miniature version of what's behind me, uh, this oh, yeah. right oh, here. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it has a little handle thing. So this is this is a smaller version of what you saw uh, this is about half scale. And then I also 
the little uh, the little circle that they had right here, I turned it into a button so it plays something. There it goes. <laughs> so it's a button now. Nice. <laughs> but anyway. So, uh, but yeah, I did that all in Tinkercad, which was pretty pretty straightforward, easy to use, and I was able to do all these little intricate things for that uh, handle, and I, th I thought that was pretty good. I She's writing that, that down as well. Yeah. What, I mean, you, you do all these different scales. All these different scales mean look differently, typically. Mm -hmm. If I just took my camera and I try to shoot it, um, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna look different as far as the blur and as different as, you know, based on the depth and things like that. What, what are you using? What have you learned on how to, how to make that photography look literally the same, you know, life-size scale, uh, regardless of how big you build it? Um, God, you know, I, I don't even really know because when we were doing the city series, it was the same lens over and over. Is it really? Yeah, it was this big, super wide. And I'm shooting that on film. That was shot on an 8x10 film. Oh, really? Yeah. So you don't know until after the fact, like if it even, nah. Yeah. yeah. We don't know if it's going to work or not. And there's a couple of scenes that are more successful than others. And that's because we build the scenes and then we pull the camera in front and hope and cross our fingers that everything's going to be the way that it needs to be. Right. And um, we just kind of got used to it that way. After, after shooting stuff on film, I decided to go digital and um, just using a Canon 5D. So then we're shooting it in little increments. And we still don't know what it's going to look like until right. we get home and have the computer composite everything together. Right. So uh, we're always amazed at what, how things look. Sometimes there's some heavy drinking after we get the first <laughs> Because like, yeah, this isn't working the way we thought it was going to work. It's better after, though, than during, right? Right. <laughs> then you'd be after. real surprised. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So what about the camera? I mean, do you have a preference? What's your recommendations on cameras and lighting and things like that as far as keeping it simple? And Oh, you know, just a, a, these days, my, my film camera is in a big plastic tub and storage i don't know if i'll ever shoot film ever again and not necessarily uh -huh. because i don't want to it's just it's it, it's so expensive and right. now that we're in ohio i have fewer film resources around me um i just have a canon 5ds you know i go for the megapixel size i mean that's what's right. important to me because i'm not, we're still making really big images mm -hmm. um you know, you don't have to have the Hasselblad system, which is, God, last time I looked, I think it was like 55,000. Right. Like, no, right. no, 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 no. You yeah. know. No you red know. camera, nothing like that. No. <laughs> no. I can dream about that stuff, but yeah. that just means more bangs and whistles that I'll never understand yeah. how to yeah. how to use. Yeah, yeah, we can't upgrade very often. <laughs> yeah. So when we buy something, we buy it for like A the next time. decade. Yeah. yeah. And your lights are what you had in grad school. Well, I, the lights, they're, um, they're um, alien bees. Oh, okay. And I would just buy, no, I've had, we bought them more recently, but I'd only buy one or two at a time whenever the budget allowed or whenever we needed it and just keep right. buying more. And sometimes I get them new. Sometimes I got them off slightly used on eBay. Yeah. Just, like, just slowly building. You don't have to have every best tool possible to make your artwork you know it's right. like you can make really amazing images off of iphones and android oh, you know well, yeah. you, don't, you don't have to have top of the line all the time yeah to get your vision through and there was a couple scenes what concession and something else where uh we just used natural light there the was light a lot of natural in. light mm. coming through the window and it's like well that looks, that looks better, better than the, the, the scraps yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. there's your reality yeah. stuff yeah that yeah. is great yeah wow what what's your favorite thing on your bench or, or on your on your desk there? Mine's nerdy. I have digital these digital calendars. Oh wow! Yeah, look at that. Yeah. So these are like always near me. Um, sorry, it's not more exciting. Is it is it standard metric or does it do? Uh... It goes millimeters to inches. Does so it? I keep it. I keep it in inches. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Because of the program that I'm designing everything in for the laser cutter inches. Yeah. 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 If you go to use a 3D printer, they always want to do things in millimeters. And of yeah. course, because I grew up in America and, and, you know, went to public school. I, I don't know millimeters. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> the metric Google. system. <laughs> I, go, I go, you know, I start typing in and, and I do it a dozen so of the inches to 
and it just right. Me right yeah, this right me too. Like, yeah, it knows what I'm thinking. It's like, yeah, yeah. I gotta put this in the millimeters now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Kathleen? Yeah. What's your favorite tool? Um, well, I didn't think of it in terms of of tool. I thought you meant like thing. And so this could is, be. This is like Good a little uh, kidney. Yeah, it looks <laughs> like a kidney carved out of foam. That with an introduction sticker with on it. <laughs> Hello, my name is. I, this makes me so happy. It's like we did it. I don't know. We got. A, we were encouraged to send in something for like a job, and we like waited so long they didn't even consider it. And it's just, but this is part of what that that was. And it's just, I laugh every time I see it. <laughs> so it was it feels a, good. It was, it was a magazine story on organ donation. Oh yeah. 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 That's pretty good. I like that. Yeah. Does it have a name on I, it too? Or did you? No, no. <laughs> you don't know. Who, who, who's That's true. It's private, right? Right. right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Show me your other. Your... Oh, and then, and then this was a leftover uh, from one of our Christmas cards. So we did like a. Wow. Look at all the. Yeah, how did so, you do that? Did you actually go through and do each of those, or is this another one of those where you yeah. got some octopus and then put it into? <laughs> no, this is this is all ham handmade. Wow, so, really? Uh, wire, aluminum foil, epoxy, uh, putty, and oh, then Sculpey. and then Sculpey on top of that, uh -huh. and then the suckers. Yeah, so and. When I learned you could bake Sculpey more than one time, that was like relevatory to me. Oh, you so can? I didn't even know that. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. stick it back in the oven, huh? huh. Yeah. Wow. And uh, so I did all the form and got all the all the texture in and then went back and did did all the suckers separately. Oh, that's a and, good idea. Um, huh. And then like we've done just a little bit of like puppeteering stuff. So then, you know, uh, put a little nut in there so we could screw it down onto a, a threaded rod yeah. so we could have it in the in the scene and be sus suspended that that way. So have, have you tried any animation? Have you, uh, we have. With that? We've we've built props and stuff for um, a little bit for like commercial and then for like a friend's movie. Oh, uh -huh. stop motion. Movie. Stop motion movie. Yeah. So. Oh. Um, it was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love to do more. Yeah, so. <laughs> wink, wink, out there, Shameless people. plug. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. Is, is there anything that you can think of that, as far as, like, that you would say for somebody that's really wanting to do what you do or, or to do, you know, more with, like, miniatures and building and, and creating and photography, what what would you say are the, the do's and don'ts in your mind uh, in relation to that? It's a pretty broad mm. question. So. <laughs> um, do I mean we got we got into the commercial part just like backwards. Okay. We we had no intention of ever doing that. Lori answered like an email. Hey, I need I need someone to do some miniatures. So for us, that that whole like stand up just keep saying yes. Mm -hmm. Just keep saying yes. We've done a lot of work for free because it was a good project or we wanted to work with the people. And we've, we've over the years come up with a nice community that we can even just talk to, bounce ideas off of, and we kind of help each other out with different jobs. Um, so I'd say find people who like to do what you do, mm. whether or not it goes anywhere today or tomorrow, um, five years from now it might, right. or, you know, kind of, just keep learning. But try not to do too many jobs for free. Not too many. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, get, you get angry then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone says, oh, well, that. It's like, oh, it'll give you great exposure. No, well. Right. No. Yeah. That's, right. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a fallacy. Right. That's it's a judgment call there. Yeah. yeah. But. But, but becoming part of a community that's your community is, is pretty right. important to getting those connections. And also, I mean, that's also how to find ways to do things differently, right? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. That's pretty good. And then we've also sort of learned a lot just by not just staying within our lane. We've learned a lot uh, through, um, you know, not just miniature model building, but 
what do the model train people do or the like shipping people because they use do things slightly different or the like rc rc car people who are like building cars that look amazing and the gamers can build anything you've ever wanted they're (laughs) incredible um their youtube videos are there you go (laughs) yeah (laughs) but uh yeah yeah Yeah. but as far as like the way we even got into the commercial work was yeah, people just email this random. So it always end up in my junk mail. I always enjoy going to my junk folder to see if there's anything interesting there. I think there's you're going to find a bunch of my emails in there. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what was going on there. Is, is there anything where you'd say, nope, never again? Or this is the thing to... Mm. So, or something that seemed like a good idea at the time, and then it's like, oh, yeah, we're not doing uh, it this way again. <laughs> Uh, we are, we're continually making mistakes, but we always try to find the, the lesson learned in each project. And I don't want to bad mouth anything that we've ever done. Uh-huh. Um, just, um, you know, as far as your, as far as anyone out there, just try to be as, as broad skilled as possible. The more hmm. skills that you have, you know, it's like, we're, we're what, what's that saying? We're generalists. Yeah. We're generalists. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we don't master anything. Right. Because, so we can do a lot of, a lot of things good enough all trades kind of thing okay yeah yeah as opposed to being super super specific right task to task you're learning something somewhere along the line i mean could you say that with each of your projects or something new that you learned from each project oh yeah that's what keeps us that's what keeps us happy and wanting to continue to do this once it becomes rote or boring it's like right out of here yeah Yeah. if it's easy it, it probably isn't as fun yeah 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 what, what what do you do as far as uh, what are some of your references these days? Do you watch? Is there movies that you like, or there? Th- I know the music that you like. What are some of the <laughs> what are some of the things that you enjoy? We, I mean, we're always watching movies that use miniatures just mm. to see how they've used them, how they've been filmed. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. I probably don't look at as much stuff as you do. No, I think you look at more stuff than I do. Blade Runner, of course. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, yeah. it's like why can't we work with Weta? You know, yeah. and, but Weta Workshop. Granted, that would we could be only cool. do like the tiniest sliver of yeah. what they could do, but yeah, yeah. for yeah. now, um, I I think I think the most people out there would have even more skills than we have, really, since we can't do any three D modeling. But it sure would be fun to work on a film project with them. Um, we were watching some of the videos on uh, from the Weta Workshop, and they're making the new blaster for the latest. Um, the latest Blade Runner, and there was so much detail, and it's like, oh my God, there's so much detail that the right. camera will never see. Yeah. Yet they, I don't know how long they spent on that gun. Oh yeah. But they just went right down, and it's like, wow, it's like, yeah. did they overdo it? Yeah, I don't know. I don't it just know. It was amazing. We're in an yeah. 8K world now, so you just got to be careful, I guess. <laughs> you got to do everything yeah. over yeah. the top. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Well, at, at at some point, I think whoever's making it, you. You just love making this beautiful thing. Yeah. Right. And so it's just an expression and it's, no, you don't have to do it, no. but, you know. Sometimes it's but stuff that you can't see, though, either. Like your CDs that you did in the apartment. I mean, did, did any of the fronts even show? They uh, no. Very few. I think there's, like, I'm a big Kate Bush fan. <laughs> but you were so happy doing it. Yeah. I was yeah. embarrassed by some of the CDs. And I was like, oh, this is in my collection. I'm going to hide this this. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but that was the actual environment. You you matched it up, yeah. and you went yeah. through and you used a piece of was it a piece of plexiglass that you used it was. Uh, that was shaped right, and then put those you scanned <laughs> down all the pictures and put those into the uh, yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And for all the books on our shelves, I just flatbed scanned yeah. the book and you know front cover, uh, spine and back, and then put them back on I put them in the scene how I was how they were on the shelf right you matched the photograph you, you had a reference yeah. photograph and they, they were exactly yeah. the same that's that's incredible yeah. yeah I mean it's kind of insane that we did the, that intensely but it's like why not you know it's like yeah let's just, we can, because we, we can so right. might as well just go for it right yeah yeah it's it's the fulfillment you what you're what you're enjoying out of the project has to mean as much or more than what other people are going to get out of it right Right. <laughs> yeah. It has to. Yeah. Yeah. I wish. I, I wish the reason I. I would say the reason why I do some things I do is just just for other people. But is is there anything else that you can think of that's that's is a good opportunity for people to use to to be able to 
stretch out or to try something new or or places that you've come mm -hmm. into contact with that you think is a good resource for people? Stan Winston School of uh, oh, yeah. the Stan Winston School. Uh, they're all online classes. Yeah, you know, yeah. we we own we actually own the DVDs because we like to be able to stop and look at things and rewind them. Gotcha. And when we when we first started with the Stan Winston, our internet connection wasn't that strong, oh, so yeah. the videos would be pausing. Yeah. But I think that is a perfect. I mean, oh my God, yeah. they've added so many more classes. Yeah. I think that's a fabulous resource. And you can either do it cl one class at a time, or you can purchase the big uh, yeah. access, which is, yeah, yeah, yeah that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And, and they, I know, especially it's like, and not everything has to be used for what we do, commercial or artwork. But you know, some people just yeah. want to make fabulous Halloween costumes. Yeah, yeah, they have one just yeah, for I mean, how to put they, hair into like into the skin, into totally. the fake skin. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah, a whole I mean, series of those. <laughs> quite often, it's it's not that that we need to use whatever that skill is exactly how they are doing it, but right. I need to know how do they work with that material, yeah. and it's like they just happen to be making a miniature head. You know, yeah. it's like okay, well, I need to make a miniature, whatever. Right. Um, similarly, there's um, it's been traditionally like a like a dollhouse group. It's the Oh, IGMA, International Guild of Miniature Artisans. Oh. Um, and it's it's makers, it is very dollhouse centric, uh -huh. but it's the the skill level is so intense. And I've gone to they back in back in the day they would do summer workshops up in uh, up in Maine, week long workshops and you can, you know, I learned how to make a couch. I didn't need to make a couch, but I need to know how they went about organizing a project like that to make something soft and right. tufted, tufted for for whatever the heck we're going to need it for years from now. Sure. Uh, I did like miniature uh, lathe work. Um, there's miniature you can do lathe like, work. Tell me about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what have I done? Well, we have see. It's, <laughs> We do it for like silly stuff uh -huh. to make like a water bottle. Right. Oh my god, yeah. A water you bottle know, for a just the right scale. Yeah. On a or, full size um, lathe though, or or what like do you have a special tool that you have that you're that's spinning that for it's you? It's a full size it's a full Is size really? lathe. Just tightened all the way yeah. in. And then and then <laughs> micro 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 tool. Wow. And I mean I think there's smaller ones out there, but I didn't know that before uh -huh. I took the class. And I asked my teacher about it and like how small because I kind of told her what I what I did. And she's like, I have a friend who makes thimbles on a full size plate. Wow. plate. So it's like again, I don't need to make a thimble, but I need to know how to make a sphere or how to make ribs yeah. and something like that that I either cast or we paint to look like something else. Um, yeah, you also made a space capsule on the lathe. Space capsule. Oh, really? So again, it's you know I would look at the classes and be like, what is the basic skill? It's like okay, shaping things. You know, again, I don't need a twisted lamp base, but <laughs> you know I need a column of a certain sense. Yeah, there was yeah. several things like that. Right. Um, so yeah, so I would say look at maybe something parallel to what you're doing, you know, again, and like classes, uh, groups, granted COVID, not that right, easy. Right. Um, but these, these communities, which are more about sharing skills and then you can adapt it. You know, I would love to know how to hand letter signage. Cause you know what? We need to make little tiny and I need right. better, uh, brush skills, mm. you know? Yep. Wow. So yeah. Um, a little tiny, uh, glasses and <laughs> so yeah. Just, yeah work it away yeah wow totally yeah totally do, do you ever buy so, things in in bulk or, or run across something where you're like well i better get a few of these because i might not run across this again oh that's a good question uh hmm, hmm, probably <laughs> <laughs> materials in bulk that's for sure mm -hmm. just to make shipping cheaper sure. in order to get these plates for the eggs i had to run to four different stores yeah to uh 
find the plates, but oh, that's yeah. about as bulk as it gets. We have yeah. a lot of beads and like small little findings that Googly will eyes. turn into elements of, of larger stuff. Sure. So, yeah. Um, and th yeah, we have lots of bins to help organize gotcha. Do you want to give our stuff tour of the studio. Do you uh, want to see our messy studio? Well, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. I was all disappointed right. actually when you said you were planning on cleaning at first. I was like, oh, well, oh, that no, would take away no. all oh, the that, fun, though. That quickly <laughs> went out the window. No, no, we never, we never clean. <laughs> <laughs> well, we rarely clean. Um, so what, what, what becomes crazy is like we've got I don't know how many tables, and I will always end up working in like an eight-inch square, ten square feet over there and i will work here okay <laughs> and, and multiple tables and i will work here yeah. in balance and it just gets to be sort of nuts and stuff wow. yeah so wow. this is this is the shared table in this room this is what my desk looks like and we have an insane amount of candy that's right now. great i thought that because was part of the project just say it's part of the project it works <laughs> it is part it's part of it's part of the project yeah it's like oh my god i'll be diabetic by the time that's and true. our particular project the client's colors is blue so i had to spray a bunch of sprees blue oh wow to make them so they're all toxic sprees yeah i, I see you work with foam too i didn't even ask you about foam oh my god foam's our favorite thing is it this is a yeah this is an ongoing scene this is like uh, over a year. This is going to be delivered to California. This is a diorama for Shasta County, California. Oh, wow. There's something at the it's, top, too. You got a, uh, like a little mountain. That's an art. There. That's a personal scene for us, for our, one of our artworks. Is it so. really? It's beautiful. I like the little yeah. bridge, too. That's pretty cool. Ah, yeah. It's based on a painting. So is it really? That's, huh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. And um, another workspace that's Kathleen's. It's totally taken over with, you know materials and there's our shelves oh yeah you still have the arch they'll have yeah. the arch Some yeah bu buildings up there i bet so do you need to use buildings a lot like do you bring back the buildings quite a bit you know we're not so lucky as to be able to use the same buildings over and over mm. again because each scene the scale's a little off good carvers right there like so like there's my there's my shelf oh wow buildings ready oh, yeah. to yeah yeah i need to do something yeah huh <laughs> I like that too. And then this is the, this is the other workroom. We call this the yellow room. Um, so there's our work table for the oh, yeah. client. We're building a, uh, a gingerbread house. That works. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to we have to encapsulate everything. Is, in, it, is um, this where the candy comes in? This yeah. is where the candy comes oh, in, gotcha. and then it's lacquered like crazy, so it doesn't bleed right. out into the fake. And these are our small tools that we have. Oh, grinder! Here. I need one of those right now, actually. <laughs> um, I, I like this size grinder. Yeah. Proxon makes it. I got this from Micro Micro Mark. Oh. So that's like yeah, because it our... goes all the way into the center too. That's kind of nice. I like that. Yeah, it's not yeah. a side one. Yeah. Well, whereas this one, you know, it's much smaller. Wow. But I like the long. Yeah, that's I like the, the band long, type. Um, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. And this is our favorite. I mean, oh, everyone yeah. needs like a miniature chop saw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then any good studio has lots of foam. <laughs> oh, is that? Wow. <laughs> yeah. And this is many years, and it's like two whole rows of of landscaping material. Wow. Yeah, you got to like, recognize some of the grass and some of the sand and... Yeah, I've used. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And and just opening up one of those can cause like a dramatic mess. <laughs> it sticks to everything. <laughs> it's like glitter. Oh, glitter is the worst. Oh yeah. You know? It's like oh. oh. But we've got uh, like three different shelves. Oh yeah. Um, tried to categorize things oh. as much as we can. So up there at the top, I have a bunch of of that stuff, like the I beams to the to the oh, side yeah. pieces. Yeah, I use that a yeah. lot. It's, we use a lot of styrene. See, it's yeah. not very, as far as the pre-cut stuff, the stuff that's shaped, um, the place yeah. that I go, they'll only have one bag of one thing. So, you mm. you know, so you only get one and then it's like, oh, well, I guess I got to go to a different scale for because <laughs> they don't have another yeah. bag. Or you just go right to Plastruct and order and have them send it to yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And then our, you know, very important googly eyes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then, those are and big googly into... eyes too those are not well, small ones well we can eat big ones too yeah yeah so somewhere there's a whole nother bin of them yeah i think that's at the other space yeah 
Uh. And then, um, and then our, oh, I'm following you into the kitchen. Oh. And then this is our, this oh, is our beautiful laser, laser, laser cutter. cutter. So you had no yeah. fire story yet. That's pretty good. That's that's the thing that. Well, there's a big hole in my table where I <laughs> where some foam caught on fire, and I was like, I don't know if you can uh, raise the glass. Oh you see yeah, that hole? yeah. That was our fire. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. See, everybody yeah, has our... at least one of those stories, so that's okay. <laughs> it's, it was a little, it was a little creepy, and then of course we have our fire. Uh, that's a good thing to have. Yeah. 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 And I'm going to plug this. Like most of these lasers come from like China uh -huh. and I always have technical difficulty. I bought one made in America. So when I call for tech support, I'm actually speaking. Oh, that's pretty cool. Um, with someone live as opposed to the online chats. Yeah. Wow. And very important for us is the uh, plexi cutter. Oh, I, wow. I, How I tall does my, that go? I, I really, does that go all the way to the ceiling? Yeah. Wow. It does. I cut myself really bad um, trying to cut down some plexi. So oh, that was a Christmas present from my mother. She said, what do you want? It's like, I want one of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then our spray booth. Oh, nice. Yeah. Where, so, where's your ventilation go? Does it go straight out to the back? It goes right out the, the window. window. Yeah. We have a, an air conditioner and a ventilation. Very important to be ventilated. Oh. Yeah. And then, of course, you got to have one. Of, you have to have these. Yeah. Which, which I couldn't even get a hold of one because of the pandemic. I, I had to pr spray some uh, cabinets and was unable to do the project because I couldn't get all the something that nobody should even need to use outside a project. I know. Yeah. Uh, wow, our, look at that. That's a lot of acrylic and stuff. Yeah. We're talking 20 years of of, you yeah. know, yeah. purchases. Do you do more still... of the of the like the acrylics and things or do you do more of the spray or airbrush or? it depends on the, it depends on the job if it's like a commercial job we do a lot of spray paint mm -hmm. but if it's going to be a fine art project that needs to last five plus years we're going to use high quality acrylics mm -hmm. that won't fade mm -hmm. over time so do you, that's why you see do you do any uh, airbrushing oh yeah do you? I, that's what we've been mostly been doing right now is airbrushing um all that pancake all the pancakes oh yeah and, yeah yeah, That's like nice. here's our, as you can see, our kitchen sink. It's yeah. like, there's the microwave in between yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got some and spices mixed in. That's that's a good one. Don't mix <laughs> yeah. any of those up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this is the candy that's been like spray painted like crazy. Oh, so yeah. you don't want to eat that. Yeah. Yeah. How are you doing the gumballs without the color coming off the gumballs? Uh, or, I think those are gumballs uh, out there. We oh, have, those yeah, have been, those have been sprayed also. Have they? Are sprayed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's so pretty we'll good. It all day in in the mask yesterday. Yeah, wow. everything's been sprayed. Do you have so, a cricket? Or have you? I we had a uh, God. What was the one pre cricket? What was the? I don't know what that is. It's the cutter, the little vinyl cutter. Oh, yeah, silhouette. A silhouette. Oh but yeah, once the we got silhouette. The laser cutter. Mm -hmm. I got rid of the silhouette. I sent it to a friend. Yeah. 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 Laser cutter definitely spray. would be a better move. <laughs> there's your spray. There's your, there's your gumball. Yeah. Ready to go. Wow. I'm surprised. <laughs> Usually they, they kind of bleed. They're, that's pretty good. Yeah. Huh. We got another like five yeah. pounds of them if you want. Oh, yeah, there you go. Our, <laughs> our, our bleed test. And then after she coated them, it seems all, all right. So, yeah. Wow. But you can see like what the, uh, Oh, there's the foam. The, Spray paint and, and foam and don't the mix. Yeah. <laughs> no, they do not. Yeah. yeah. So that's wow. kind of like our 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 new ish studio. Kathleen wow. moved in here about three months ago. Uh huh. So. So, so this is age. really. I mean, this is a new new situation for you. It is. It is for. I've been here for two years, and she's moved in about. Three months ago. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's the difference? I mean, as far as I mean, cause it's still that's still a good size city. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, now everything's different. So. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, um, I get that. Driving but, you know. everywhere is different, yeah. but in some ways, easier to you know go to the hardware store and just get stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um. I don't know. It's, well, the difference is like we're no longer living and working in the same that place. That is yeah. different. We yes. each retire to our own apartment, so we get a break from from the studio. Yeah, that's pretty nice. That yeah. that is pretty good. And you know, when 
back in April and May when it, when New York was really having a hard time, Kathleen couldn't even really go outside of her apartment without fear of catching COVID. Yeah. But here in Ohio, since everyone's more spread out, it doesn't feel as dramatic. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So that's been kind of a nice because so we're, we've actually been able to continue working throughout this whole period. Wow. Where a lot of our friends in film and video um, got shut down. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. true. That's yeah. that's the benefit, and it's right there in the house for the most part, right? I mean, you you have the access down the street and things. That's pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. So, well, I, yeah, it wouldn't have worked otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, I I think it's it's. Thank you so much for being able to to come and do this and to to work with me on the the whole technical piece because <laughs> that that kind of got. Me, I actually have something for you. So these are. These are aprons, the ones that have the, all the pockets and the, the different Ooh-hoo! sections. And one says nice. uh, big picture, and the other one says details. There you go. Yay! How's that? Oh, and you can choose who wears what on that. I get the big picture. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for letting us be able to do this. Yay! If you are interested in learning more about Lori Nix and Kathleen Gerber, make sure that you check out some of the links that are down below. Also, like, subscribe, comment below, and stay tuned for more of your geek fix.